To me, my favorite way to catch bass and also a very effective technique during the summer is by fishing a topwater lure of some sort. And the big thing that I have found is that it's almost critical that you always keep topwaters with you when you are fishing. But there's a lot of different types of topwaters out there on the market. I mean, you have frogs and poppers and walking style baits, and those baits really suit certain conditions better than others. And today I want to talk about that. I want to talk about when to throw which top water during the summer so that you can be very effective and efficient out there on the water and catch a lot of bass. So let's dive on in. Now the first top water that I want to talk about is a frog. And a frog is one that, like I said, if you're a bank fisherman, if you are fishing big lakes, creeks, rivers, a frog is just a bait that you should have with you. Because the thing about a frog is that it's actually a fairly subtle topwater bait. If you think about a lot of your topwater baits, a lot of them have noise, rattles, a lot of sound, and a frog is actually none of those. It's a very silent bait. Most frogs don't have any kind of rattles in them. As you can see, there's nothing. So it's a very subtle bait. And during the middle of summer, sometimes those really subtle lures like a frog can get a lot of bites. Now, when it comes to fishing a frog during the summer, the number one reason I'm going to pick up this bait is if I have have some sort of vegetation in the water that I'm fishing. If you're fishing a pond that has a ton of weeds or scum mats in it, a frog is absolutely the first thing that I'm going to throw. And if you're fishing a creek or a lake that has a lot of grass in it as well, whether that's hydrilla or milfoil or even coontail or even grass like lily pads and reeds that are emergent coming out of the water, again, a frog is one of the first baits that I'm gonna throw up. The best thing about a frog is it's almost impossible to snag this thing. You can throw it across some of the nastiest grass and it's going to come through that stuff very, very well. So anytime that I am facing vegetation of some sort, a frog, is my go-to. Now, when it comes to frogs, you have two main style of frogs. You have the pointed nose, like the one right here, and then you have a popping style frog like you have over here. Now, in vegetation, if I can fish the pointed nose frog like this one, I am going to throw it most of the time because it comes through that vegetation the very best. Now, one thing that makes me switch over to the popping frog is actually if the fish start missing the pointed nose frog. These are these are both a spro frog. This is a spro bronze eye 65. This is a spro poppin' frog. And if you look at these frogs, the poppin' frog is just a little bit more slender than the bronze eye 65. And I have seen a lot, especially from Ohio where I live, where we have a lot of pound and a half fish, that you have days where the bass come up and they hit this bait, this regular like 65 pointed nose bait, and they don't get hooked up. And in that situation, I have found that switching over to a more slender frog like this poppin' frog those fish will actually commit to that bait. Even if you are fishing around slime and scum mats, those fish, even though this is a little bit harder to fish, they will commit to it a little bit better. So those are the two frogs that I really, really like, and those are the situations I fish them in. Now I wanna move on to the next bait that I throw probably the most during the middle of summer, and that is your walking style baits like the ones that I have right here. Now these are two of my absolute favorite walking baits out there on the market. This is just a KVD sexy dog. It's probably the most consistent uh, walking style bait that I have found. It's readily available and like I talked about, and all of my videos, my links for these lures are gonna be found down below in the description. This other lure here is an Evergreen JT. This is actually the 95 series. So the big thing with these style baits, walking style baits, is that I fish a lot of clear water and I fish around a lot of bass that are eating minnows and bait fish like shad. Anytime that I'm fishing around clear water and bass that are eating those style of bait fish, this is probably the number one bait that I'm going to pick up. You can cover a pretty good amount of water. It may not be as fast as all the top waters out there, but you can cover a lot of water and you can get some really aggressive and big fish to bite a walking style bait. Now, the two big things that I look for in my walking baits that I'm really going to play with is the size of them. So if you look at the sexy dog here, I think it's a four and a half or five 
five inch bait. And then you have this little JT over here. It's a lot more slender of a bait. It's only about three and a half or four inches long. And that's one big thing that I'm going to play with a lot when it comes to fishing these baits in the summer is the size of them. There are times, especially in that immediate post spawn, where those bass really like that bigger topwater and even bigger ones than this sexy dog. But then there are a lot of times, especially later in the summertime, where I start using a lot of these smaller profile walking baits. The other thing that I really pay attention with these baits is, is the sound. The sexy dog, most sexy dogs, they have a lot of noise to them. The Evergreen JT, nothing, no noise at all. That is a huge component out there on the water. There are days where bass absolutely love a lot of sound. There are days where bass do not want sound. Typically, if I have wavy or windy conditions, that's when I like the sound. If I have really calm conditions, that's when I like no sound. Now that's not always the case, but that's kind of my general rule of thumb with these baits. So that is the top water walking style baits. That is when I like to throw them. Now the next bait that I throw a ton during the summer is a popper. A popper to me is one of the most overlooked baits out there when it comes to topwater fishing. I think with the invention of all these other different topwaters, a lot of guys have just kind of forgotten about the popper, but it is a still a very, very effective tool to go out there and catch a lot of bass. Now, the big thing with a popper, and this is actually my favorite popper right here. This is an ARC TP70 popper. The reason that I like this popper so much is because it does a little bit of everything when it comes to the action. This bait will walk back and forth, just like a walking topwater bait. You can actually also spit water really well, and you can bloop water really, really well. The thing that you see with a lot of popper baits is they're very different across the market. Some baits will only really bloop they really only make that plooping noise. Some spit really well and some walk really well. This bait here does a little bit of everything. Now, the big thing with the popper, the biggest reasons that I pick this bait up over other top waters is one, if the bass are feeding on really small bait fish, if they're feeding on, you know, young of the year bluegill or young of the year shad or really small bait, that popper in my mind gets a lot of bites over baits like a spook. Some days I have actually gone out and I have found fish that are hitting this spook and they are missing it. They're popping it into the air, but they're missing it. Then I will pick up the little popper style bait and they will eat this. You can see the difference in size in these two baits, very, very different. And there are days where the bass will just get this bait a little bit better. So if bass are eating those really small bait fish, a lot of times in the summer, that is when I pick up this bait. Now, the other thing that I really like this spook for is around bluegill beds. I love to fish a, a bluegill pattern popper style bait, and I'm gonna fish it on the outside edges of a bluegill bed. Bluegill will come to the bank pretty much every full moon throughout the summer. I mean, June, July, August, September, they will keep coming to the bank and they will create these little bluegill beds. And the bass will be just around these bluegill beds feeding up on these fish. That is one of the biggest reasons that I will pick up this popper. Now, the next topwater bait I wanna talk about is a buzz bait. This to me is my dirty water top water bait. If I'm fishing way up a creek or on a lake that has a lot of dirty water on it, this is the bait that I like to pick up. For me, it's just the best bait when it comes to dirty, dirty water. If you are a river fisherman, it also seems like even if you have clean water rivers, that bass just like a buzz bait for whatever reason. Now, I'm not saying that this bait won't work well in clear water because it absolutely will, but if I see dirty water, that's just when I absolutely tie this bait up and I just start covering a lot of water with it. Now, with that being said, when it comes to the color of this bait, a lot of times I'm actually not gonna go with the one that you see here, which is kind of shaddish in color. I'm going to use just a straight black and a lot of times I'm actually just going to use some sort of black horny toad style bait on my buzz bait. It's, it's a great way to cover a ton of water. This to me, these style baits, a buzz bait, you can cover so much water. You can keep your trolling motor on high, or even if you're fishing a pond, you can just walk, continually walk down the bank and cover a lot of water until you find those areas that have a lot of fish. So dirty water, that's the bait that I'm picking up. Now, the last top water that I want to talk about is kind of like a spook and a buzz bait put together. And that is your plopping style bait right here. This is a Berkeley 
Chapo. And this has become, this 105 uh, series right here has really become probably my favorite plopping style bait. I love that this tail on a Chapo really gets started as soon as you hit the water. I've caught a ton of fish on a, a standard Whopper plopper. I think it's one of the best baits out there. But something that I, I have seen with that Whopper plopper at times is that that tail won't get started quite as quick as the Chapo does. So I really like a Chapo. Now, the Chapo to me is a little bit odd when it comes to a bait because the thing about a Chapo is it will basically work in all of the situations that we just talked about, except for if you're fishing it around really heavy vegetation that's matted, where really the only thing that's gonna come through that is a frog. But that's the kind of weird thing to me about a Chapo or that Whopper Plopper style bait is that they don't really have any rules. It just seems like the bass some days really like that noise that these baits make, and there's days when they don't. I have fished this bait in the middle of summer in really clear water. I have fished it on lakes that are extremely dirty and caught them. I have fished it around bluegill beds, around docks, way up rivers, in open water for smallmouth, and it just catches fish in all different conditions. So to me, this is one of those things that I just have it tied up. And if I know that the fish are, are hitting top water, I will throw it every now and then to see if they are specifically hitting this one a little bit better. It's a great way to catch some absolute monster bass. So those are the top waters that I use throughout the summer. And those are the situations that I like to throw them. If you guys enjoyed this video, please don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.